All right. Uh, welcome, uh, Rick Miller, uh, to the progressive rockcentral.com. Thank you for taking the time to talk with us about your latest album, Old Souls. It's a wonderful album with a great blend of classic and modern progressive rock. You'll hear a lot of Pink Floyd in it, which is wonderful. Uh, definitely a, a fan. And uh, 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 Rick is a Canadian composer, arranger, musician. And I'm going to let him tell you a little bit more about himself uh, rather than me tell you. All right. Thanks, Mark. Um, yeah, it, uh, I uh, don't do this a whole lot. I'm uh, relatively a uh, relative unknown in the business, and uh, that's okay with me. Um, I think that'll be changing <laughs> after this. Uh, uh, for me, music is is a hobby. Um, like I'm a I'm a retired public servant, so um, I I. Uh, you know, play music, record music, produce music, um, because I enjoy doing it. And uh, I get a kick out of it. And there, I have a, a small fan base around the world that seems to appreciate what I do. So that, you know, that makes it a bit more rewarding. Um, other than that, I'm definitely not a professional at this, unlike probably other people you've, uh, you've interviewed. Well, you, um, you'd have me fooled because the music is... <laughs> well, you perfect. do it long enough and uh, you learn a few tricks along the way. But it's it's been a hobby that uh, I probably started in the early 80s. I know that's a heck of a long time ago now, but um, and back then there was no digital recording or anything like that. I had a bunch of old analog keyboards and small analog recording studio and uh, I did that in my spare time after work in the evenings that sort of thing and uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit then kind of uh, uh, my wife and I raised a, started raising a family and I dropped it for a while and then a few years back oh I don't know back in around the turn of the millennium um, I started getting back into it and much to my surprise I realized it was so much easier now you could uh, get a little computer and do way more stuff than I could with all that uh, analog recording equipment. And um, yeah, it was, it, it took a lot of the work out of it. Um, I used to own a Mellotron and I remember before using it every time you'd have to get the, the Q-tips and the rubbing alcohol out and clean all the heads and then the anti-static gun out and demagnetize everything and then the recording equipment itself, of course you gotta keep those heads clean and you got to align them every once in a while. You buy these alignment tapes and oh, there was so much <clears throat> back then that was, I, I would just call work. Um, but you don't have to worry about that anymore. Everything's perfect now. <laughs> I know some people prefer the analog sound. Um, okay, maybe, uh, honestly, um, if I was to sit down and you played me a, an old analog recording right next to a 24 bit, 99 point, you know, whatever kilohertz uh, digital recording. I can't imagine I could tell a difference. Maybe some people can, but I can. So, anyways, yeah, that's it's sort of my glorified hobby. Um, I bring in other people, as you can see, looking at the album credits to help. Um, I uh, write music. I uh, write pieces for other people. Um, I play a bunch of different instruments, but when I want somebody that can really do it, um, I bring them in. So I have uh, a cello player, a flute player, uh, occasionally a percussionist and uh, a guitar player for the, you know, and, you know, they, they don't really spend a lot of time on it other that, like I do. They just come in and do what I ask them to do, and that's the end of it for them. And, uh, they all, they're all professionals in their own right and have their own career. So uh, this is my hobby and they help me out and I'll either pay them or, uh, or exchange other things with them just for further services. And uh, it's been fun. Well, great. Yeah, the old burner system. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm glad to hear that you're one of those few people like me that actually does prefer well, maybe you didn't really say that, but I'll say it, um, that I actually do prefer the digital sound because I, 
years and years of listening to Pink Floyd and bands like the Genesis is one of my other favorites and having those crackles and oh, pops and skips and all that. Oh, you gotta better. be and I, I was an audiophile. I kept those things spotless and still, uh, you know, yeah. to be in the middle of, you know, a long, you know, supper's ready or something, that quiet break, and you hear those crackles, it just drove me. Oh, and then you got to get up and change the record every 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, yeah, yeah, I don't like that either, yeah. But, you know, just to be able to hear the first time when I bought the, the Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon uh, uh, CD, just to hear it for the first time with no interruptions, no pops, no skips. I mean, I was like in heaven. And that was one of the first uh, CDs I think I ever bought. I, I purposely waited, even though they, they'd been out a while, but I said, no, no, the first one I here is going to be Dark Side of the Moon. And it was like, thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I know there's a lot more warmth and all in the analog, or that's what everyone says. But uh, with that warmth comes the pops and the skips. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I would like to say, like, anytime I've read uh, information about uh, the difference, and I've never really seen anybody say uh, uh, that. You know, the people that say the, the analog warmth, as, as you say, um, have they ever actually sat down and done a, a blind check w without knowing what the source was? Because I, I would be amazed if somebody could really do this and tell me the, the difference. Maybe there are people. I'm not one of them. Yeah, me either. Well, let's talk about this fantastic album you made, um, Old Souls. Uh, let's start with, well... Let's start with the title, because I, I I agree with you. I, I feel sometimes like I was, uh, you know, I like that classical sort of Renaissance sound. So maybe part of me was, you know, born in another time. Is that kind of what you're talking about? or um, it's Sort of. Uh, like when, as far as the name of the album goes, I generally don't name albums until I'm finished with them. And then I, by that point, um, whether it be intentional or not, I generally get a, a vibe from uh, the overall sound, the songs, the lyrics. And with this one, it's, uh, there was a few songs in there that uh, when I wrote them, I was sort of thinking along the lines of, well, you know, a karma, so to speak. Um, well, you know, one song's called Lost Karma, uh, Haunt Me. Um, can't think of everything offhand, but um, that was sort of the overall vibe was uh, the continuation of consciousness uh, from one life to another. You know, we, we in the Western world you know, don't really uh, appreciate really what that is very much, but uh, in a lot of uh, religions, it's, a, it's an integral part. Um, so, you know, we, it's easy for us to go about our own way and not accept that, but uh, it is accepted probably by more people in the world than it isn't, I don't know. Um, but uh, it, I find it fascinating, interesting, and uh, when you look at it from an artistic point of view, it's very fertile grounds for, for creation. And uh, in, when I was finished with the album, I looked at some of the songs and some of the lyrics, and. Uh, it sort of led in that direction and, and the expression old souls, you know, uh, in, in accordance with the, with the karma philosophy is, is someone who is not necessarily an old person, but uh, a, a soul that has lived throughout many lifetimes and is getting close to nirvana, shall we say. Um, so yeah, I found it intriguing, uh, as I say, ar artistically fertile and uh, it was fun. All right, let's start with the first track, uh, Time's Away. Beautiful. Okay, time, yeah, Time's Way. Um, that, that was uh, another of the songs that the lyrics sort of lent in that direction. Um, time will have its way is, is sort of what it comes down to, that it, it's about destiny, yeah, or predestiny, if you want to call it that. Um, no matter what we do in this life, time will have its way with us. If, if something is meant to be, it will be. Yeah. Um, musically, uh, when I started it off, I wanted like an album opener. 
I always like to have a like an atmospheric album opener. I think I've done that with just about all my albums. Um, and then I'm thinking like I always draw inspirations. And, and at the beginning of this, I'm thinking Alan Parsons. Um, Alan Parsons always said, yeah. and really, uh, what I really enjoyed the his album openings. Uh, so that was sort of what was going through my mind when you got the, the little, there's the little introduction, but then it sort of starts building in the way uh, that an Alan Parsons project song would. And then it builds up to, uh, you know, uh, a, a verse and then a chorus and then lots of guitars and some keyboards. And uh, I'll, I'll take something like that until uh, I think the, the song was about what, seven or eight minutes. I haven't got it from me here. But yeah, at that point, I think I've pretty well run through uh, what ideas I have and uh, it worked out to be a good album. Definitely, it is. Yeah, and the next one. Oh, okay, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, when I think of Guinevere, the first thing that comes to me is the uh, Crosby Stills Nash. Yeah, yeah, it did me yeah. too. And I, I was sort of hesitant to, to leave that as the title. And I, I thought at first, maybe I'd just call it the heart of Guinevere, because that's sort of where the lyrics went. Um, it's nothing like the CSN. No, but, no, but, but it, it's a little misleading if you're yeah, no, really no, familiar. No. Well, it, 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 I was a little uncomfortable with it too, because I'm quite familiar with um, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, uh, and uh, there was no intention to uh, right. capitalize no, I'm not on saying anything, that. because the song is completely different, but it is acoustic. I, and I wanted to change the pace at this stage after, um, after the opening track, which is kind of heavy. Um, so I wanted something a lot lighter. And of the songs that I had completed, this one kind of fit the best. Um, and as far as prog rock goes, some people might have thought it was too light, but hey, I'm not I'm not in the business of trying to please everybody. It just felt right to me. You can't. It can't be <laughs> you and can't it was short, but I, it felt pleasant to me. So no, I loved it. It was wonderful. It it gives the old uh, CSN a run for its money, definitely. Well, completely different. It, uh, yeah, but in terms of uh, well, I could never match those guys for harmony, but uh, we can always try. You, you look at, at bands like that for inspiration, and you say, "What do you really? What do you want to sound like?" And they, of course, when you think of harmony, either CSNY or Mamas and the Papas or something like that, you try to uh, you try to follow their example, and uh, you know you, you do the best you can. You're not obviously not going to do as well as them, but. Uh, you follow an I example, think you, did. you learn how to do things, just listening to them. Uh, yeah, no, but I, I think you did. I think it was very good. Awesome. Um, now, how about Haunt Me? Uh, it is very haunting, and uh, but it's it's a beautiful song as well. Um, yeah, I what what I like to do when I when I when I put an album together, I have a bunch of songs I've finished with them. I like to start off with an atmospheric opener and then go do a change of pace and then go into something that's more immediately likable, something with a with a bit of a hook in it. Um, and I didn't think there was a whole lot in this collection of songs, but that one maybe came the closest. It wasn't terribly long, but it had a, a bit of a hook uh, in the uh, in the chorus. So I thought because of that, it would suit here. Um, once again, it goes back to the karma type lyrics haunt me uh, you're haunting me from it's not necessarily another person haunting me but it could be an entity it could be god it could be oh that, to me that that's the way lyrics should work who's ever listening should you know should be able to apply their own interpretation to it and the composer should make it so that that can happen and i try to do that um, so yeah, we have lyrics that are in line with the overall mood of the album, and uh, I like to feel a, a catchy song with a hook that uh, people can like immediately. All right, uh, Virgin Rebirth. Okay, uh, once again, change of pace I'm looking for here. I wanted to up the pace a little bit. Um, so when you listen to that, there's, uh, I can't remember what the beats per minute was, but it was cranked up considerably. This was probably the liveliest track I had recorded. 
is instrumental and it had a bunch of different things going on. So I thought this was a good time to stick that one in. Um, as far as the title, I, I wanted to get a title that was sort of in line with the overall mood. And I just thought, well, rebirth. And then you think, well, there's virgin birth. I've had virgin rebirth. So it sort of came together like that. And uh, I think it needed a change of pace at that point. Um, that was the idea. All right. Uh, just take a little break from this. And what hobbies or things do you like to do when you're not producing or writing music? You mentioned a few, but. Well, um, the way I go about music, and I know this is probably a little different than most people do, is when I start into something, I really get into it. So I'll spend hours and hours and basically do very little of anything else for several months. My wife knows when I'm, when I'm in one of these moods because I disappear. <laughs> and um, so when I finish, like I finished this one not too long ago, there's sort of a void for a little while. So I'm not having anything whatsoever to do with music. So uh, there's plenty to do around here. I said I'm retired, um, but we live in a big old house that uh, constantly needs things fixed. Um, yeah. We have a couple of energetic dogs. My wife is still working, so she disappears to work every day. Uh, my kids come and go. Um, there's lots to do. <laughs> Not nothing terribly remarkable. It's just uh, you know, I I run every day, or I try to run every day, do some sort of workout every day, just to keep things from uh, getting too stale inside. But uh, nothing terribly remarkable. Yeah, but that's just what you said there. Uh, he, well, before we started this, he was talking about how cold it is. The fact that you're out jogging is awesome. <laughs> well, I'll head off to you. We we went walking down by the. Uh, we have a bay right near us, and it was just freezing for our standards. I mean, it's nothing compared to what you guys are going through. But um, that. Yeah, and that was just walking. I, I mean, I can't imagine running. <laughs> but although I did that when I was a I, when I was a kid, I did actually jog in uh, from Ohio and uh, jogged in like minus. We had a wrestling coach that was a nut, and he made us <laughs> jog two and a half miles in you know minus ten degrees, and there was ice on the track. It was like you know you're gonna somebody's gonna get hurt, but. So I've done that, but I know how hard that is. <laughs> well, you, you, once you're really, I've been doing it for 30 some years. So it, once you really get into it and get used to it, you, you miss it if you, if you don't do it for a day. Yeah. So it, it's, and I, I really feel I have to do something. So this time of year, you have to stick to the roads, obviously. And of course, we can go cross country skiing here too, which is a great workout uh, or just, Brain hiking. That's, that's yeah. always a good work out too. You got to keep the brain cells aerated. That's what I think. There you go. Yeah, and we're not getting any younger. No. Uh, <laughs> how about the red sky? The red sky um, started off as just a small flute piece, but then I, I kind of I started to like it more and more, and I added a few things here and there. It's not terribly long, but it, there's a bunch of different things I've stuck in there. It's one of my favorite, actually. Um, it's not something you're going to listen to right away that, and you've never heard it before and think, oh, I really like that. Um, but if you listen a few times, hopefully uh, it'll grow on you. Uh, it, it grew on me. I know that. It, it's one of those ones, as a composer uh, and people that put together music like this, some songs, you know, you're glad to be done with them. You kind of get tired of listening to your own stuff. But some of them you just like more and more. You can sit there and listen to yourself more and more. And this, I felt, was one of them. And the, the flute playing, I thought, was just great. All right. Um, I know I'm going to pronounce this next one wrong. Um, is it Ixtlan? Well, that would depend. You'd have to ask uh, Carlos Castaneda that. <laughs> That's... Uh, Based on the, the books by Carlos Castaneda, um, Ixlan, The Journey to Ixlan was the name of the book. Um, and it's sort of, uh, I don't know if you've ever read any of that, but it's sort of a, I haven't, no. 
Uh, it's, it's interesting. You have to kind of be in the mood. Sounds like it. Yeah. After and, listening uh, to this song, I am interested, definitely. Yeah, well, it's, uh, I read it a long time ago, and it's about uh, the teachings of Don Juan, who was, uh, uh, what was it now? He was in Mexico, and they took a lot of peyote anyway, and they dreamt <laughs> a lot of things. And a lot, a lot of the teachings of Don Juan uh, make a lot of sense. Uh, and they're sort of worked into the lyrics. You would have to, I guess, you know, go to the book and I guess online, just look up some of the, the phrases from the book and you would see I used them in the lyrics. And then the, musically, I, I put a little harmony in this. I, I just thought it, it felt like it needed it. Sort of felt like doing the Crosby, Stills, Nash thing as best I could, and uh, I think it worked out all right. Yep. Uh, Stitch in Time is really it. It, it sounds almost like uh, Steve Hackett's here with you. Uh, <laughs> I really, uh, yeah, if, like I say, I'm a Genesis fan, but yeah, uh, I mean, I like all music, but in, in my older albums, I always like to get a little bit of uh, ethnic sounds in there. And uh, I hadn't done that for a while. So this one sort of uh, sort of presented itself that way and I, I couldn't resist the opportunity. So um, yeah, I, I worked a few things in there and then we get the flute and a few other things going on. And uh, they're, they're kind of fun to do when you start pulling different things out of the air like that. And yeah, it was fun. I think it, I, I felt it worked out well um it was a little bit catchy a little bit different and uh if you're into you know the international sort of ethnic sounds uh you know the the, the uh oh the the east in, the east Indian oh, yeah. sounds like there's a lot of midi uh patches available that, that sound really good and that that's what i used on this i just certainly didn't get a uh, anybody to come in and play it for me. <laughs> it, uh, I thought it sounded good and worked out well with the flute, Sarah playing the flute, and uh, yeah, I was happy with it. All right, Lost Karma. Oh, Lost <laughs> Karma. Um, funny, that was kind of a, a leftover thing. It, it wasn't one that I was really excited about. It, it kind of half worked out, and then I got my, my son plays the violin, so I got him in there to just sort of see if we could spice it up a bit. And sure enough, we did. Um, so it's only a couple of minutes long, so it's sort of uh, stuck in towards later on in the album. But um, the overall effect eventually was almost like a classical sound, which I wasn't really aiming to, but it just sort of worked out that way. And well, of course, that's the beauty of prog rock. There's not really any rules. No, there aren't. Yeah. yeah, do whatever you want. Or, and it's always changing. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, yeah, I, I've done other pieces like that, and uh, I was pretty happy with it eventually. And then uh, probably one of my favorite Don Quixote, and uh, just that famous story. And uh, <laughs> but yeah, I read the book not too long ago, and. Um, I thought, you know, that, and I know other people have done musical uh, versions, partial, whatever of it, but I, I haven't heard anything for a long time. I guess maybe it's just not fashion these days, um, the book itself, but I just thought it's such a great story. And it's called the, the world's first novel, uh, written in the 16th century, I believe that's what it is. And, um, it, uh, it just struck me as being a journey, um, which is what it was. Any, you, you look at all the, the novels throughout modern civilization, and so much of it uh, can be tied back to that original idea of going on a journey. This happens, that happens. We're trying to do this, we're trying to do that. You've got the anti hero, you've got the hero, and they've got the flaws, the weaknesses, but they're still you know, right, and good, and courageous. and. Uh, there were so many stories within the story too, and uh, I wanted to write another long piece, 
And so, you know, I had bits and pieces of this here and there. And so because of the Don Quixote thing, I, I had some Spanish guitar pieces uh, from Barry Haggerty that I wanted to use too, which of course fit in with the Spanish theme of Don Quixote. And uh, so I wrote some lyrics and the, the idea was to try to get that atmosphere, that old world Spanish uh, atmosphere and sort of mix it in with that prog rock feel and uh, put together a bunch of things and try to make it work out into something cohesive. You did well. No, it's a wonderful song. I'm glad you like it. <clears throat> Excuse me. How is the album doing globally? Um, I've Pardon seen me? a lot of reviews on the internet. I think everyone's, uh, I, I haven't seen a bad one yet, and I don't think I will, but how, how's it doing? Uh, well, I don't really look after the CD sales. That's done by PPR in Germany. I, mean, I stopped selling CDs myself a while ago. It's just Canada Post. You have to use Canada Post here, and uh, they're uh, they're they're not easy and they're expensive. So I and also almost all my CD sales are in Europe. So um, I was dealing with PPR before, and I just said, you know, let's do this, and you can sell them from there. Your shipping costs are going to be a lot less than mine. Um, and so far, that's worked. We did the, we did it with this one. We did it with the last album, and uh, I'm not really sure how things are going. It seems to be about the same pace as the last one and the last three or four have all been around the same and it, it, it's kind of difficult to tell now because you've got cd sales on one hand you've got downloads on the other hand which i do through band yeah. and then you've got streaming which is totally out of my hands that's that's hand I, that's through the orchard and you hear from them once a year or so but you can go on uh, a platform like Spotify for artists and see how many plays and listeners you are. Um, because I'm a relative unknown, it doesn't, you know, each time I put something out, then I get more listeners. <laughs> yeah. So it, it tends to go up over time. Um, but, you know, once again, it's certainly not something I would ever try to make a living from. Yeah. Yeah. But I would say overall, pretty well. Critically, that it's hard to really put a label on that too, because anybody can write a review. It's not like uh, years yeah. ago when only paid journalists wrote reviews. Now, if, you know, anybody can write it, and if you know, if you don't, if the or if who's ever writing it, it isn't his particular cup of tea, then you probably won't get a good review. But if it is, uh, like you, uh, you'll get a great review. So, you know, and, and you, as an artist, you can't be terribly. Uh, sensitive about reviews either. Yeah. It's very subjective. Um, do you think you'll do any kind of tours or uh, do you prefer um, no or, I like okay. I'm I'm 65 now. <laughs> yeah well I, I, I do hey, I, the stones I, are the stones yeah, are oh yeah you. well yeah they no, have they're, they're the stones I get it but <laughs> um, it's no, not I, an age thing yeah well it is if I was well, yeah. because uh, it would be hard work. And the people I work with, they all have regular jobs. Like Barry Haggerty runs his own recording studio. Like he used to tour all the time with his band, but he's you know, he's enough of that. And uh, Sarah Young's a school teacher. And uh, mm -hmm. like you can't ask these people to give up their well paying jobs and say, oh, let, let's go on the road for uh, a few months and see what happens. Oh, yeah. No, no. But I mean, locally or? Um, no, not really. Uh, locally, um, as, as far as my musical career goes, no one has a clue who I am. Um, my son uh, plays in a Celtic band. He's a fiddler. He's a classical musician. He's far more known than I am, and he plays locally all the time. Hmm. Well, that's, that's fine with me. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're not so much a performer that way, or you don't. No, not really. I, I just do this because I enjoy sitting down in front of my computer and twerking around with these little sounds and getting people to come in, and write music and produce things and uh, all that goes with it. I, I enjoy that. And that, that's what I do here. Um, you, you're well, thank start thinking, well, thank it, goodness you do and don't stop. Well, we'll see how it goes. Every time I finish one of these, I think, do I really want to do it again? But 
then after a year or so, you start thinking, you know, that that was, I haven't done that for a long time. It was really fun the last time I did it, so why not? Well, it sounds like uh, from what you said earlier, you're kind of taking some time off, but have you thought about um, doing, doing a new one yet, or is it way too early? As, as a what? Uh, is it way too early, or have you thought? Oh, about um, it's probably too early to actually do anything because, um, but it, you know, I still have little melodies pop up in my head every once in a while, and haven't uh, done anything with them yet. But um, what I'll probably start doing soon is you record these little melodies because you you forget them otherwise. And then maybe sometime six months down the road, I'll have all these little melodies that I wanted to record so I wouldn't forget them. And then you can use that to start doing something again. So I would say if I'm going to do anything again, it probably wouldn't be for a year or anything. But who knows? Well, is there anything else uh, that you would like to discuss that we haven't covered yet? Um, not really. Um, like I said, the bottom line is it's a hobby for me. I enjoy it. Um, it's nice to get good reviews, but I don't get too upset my, if I don't get a good review or somebody gives me a bad review. Um, I enjoy talking to people that email me and ask if I signed a CD for them or something. I, I get a, the odd CD here from PPR. And if somebody's looking for something autographed, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to talk to people that are are really into it. That's that's sort of rewarding um, in itself. Well, definitely. Well, uh, Rick Miller, thank you very much uh, for taking time to talk to us uh, about old souls and your future. And we wish you the best of luck in all your future product projects. And uh, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us at progressiverockcentral.com. Well, thank uh, you very much, Mark, for having giving me the opportunity to talk about this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Okay. <laughs>